Well, welcome to the show, everybody. This is Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm your host, and I'm so excited to have you tune in. If this is your first time tuning in to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor, a very, very special welcome to you. You may be tuning in on iTunes or Google Play or one of the websites, or you may be watching one of our YouTube channels. But regardless of where you're coming in from, I want to let you know, particularly if this is your first time tuning in, we're celebrating over one year of launching the show. We are approaching 200,000 downloads and listens. And thanks to you and your support and your putting the word out and sharing, the show is just really taking off all across the United States and across the globe. If it's your first time, my specialty is private money. I'm known as the private money authority. And so I plug real estate investors into getting funding for their deals, regardless of their credit and experience and verification of income, whether you're a newbie or a seasoned real estate investor. And we're not talking hard money loans. We're actually talking private money, getting money from individuals. I've been doing the business for 15 years now here in Eastern North Carolina. I got cut off from the banks 10 years ago, but thanks to this wonderful world of private money, we haven't missed out on a deal in the past 10 years because we didn't have funding. So we never miss out on deals. And so I've got a special present and gift for all of my listeners. I've got a free online masterclass that'll take you through the five steps of getting funding for your deals. It's called where to get the money now. And after today's show, go ahead and check it out. It's ready for you. The five steps to get funding for your deals. We're going to put it right here on the video. www dot j connor j a y c o n n e r dot com forward slash money podcast well if you've been tuning in to many of my shows you know that i've had over the past year some amazing guests and experts to come here on the show and today is no exception to that in fact i've known this gentleman for a couple of years and actually was on his podcast show a couple of years ago. And I'm so glad we've stayed in contact because I now have the pleasure to share him and his very, very unique specialty with you all today. So the background of my, my guest before I bring him on here, he started out in this business with a measly $3,000 scared to death. I had absolutely no real estate investing experience when he started. And he started in this business buying a few parcels of raw land back in 2001. Well, my special guest is Mark Podolsky and Mark is a true expert and genius when it comes into this realm of land and investing in raw land. He's the best-selling author of his book, which is titled Dirt Rich. I love it. Dirt Rich. And it is the ultimate guide to helping you build a passive income. And he's also the owner of his company, which is Frontier Properties. He's got a fantastic reputation. He's located out there in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, his company is in fact, a successful land investing company. So Mark's been buying and selling and investing in raw land since 2001. And he has learned how to get this business done in a very smart way, not a hard way. He's now completed over 5,000 land deals. And check this out, folks. His average return on investment of over 300% on cash flips. And check this out. His ROI is over 1,000% on the deals that he sells with financing terms. So he's got a very, very unique strategy and exit strategy and strategy on how to find these deals that he's going to be sharing with you now. Prior to him getting involved in the land investing business, he was stressed out in the corporate world. So like so many of you are, and I know that we are tuning into the show here to learn as to how we can be set free from being tied to that type of work environment. So anyway, a few years ago, besides doing the business and he still does the business, his passion has become teaching and mentoring and coaching other folks and helping them achieve their financial goals. So even though Mark does invest a lot of his time helping others, he's still actively involved in running his land investing business. And I just can't wait for you all to hear what Mark has got to say. So my good friend, Mark, welcome to the show. 
Jay Connor, so good to see you again. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that very, uh, the very nice introduction. Thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome. Well, now, Mark, take us back to your story. So how did you get involved in all this? And, uh, and what led you up to even thinking that you wanted to try this strategy of investing in uh, raw land? So I was a overworked, overstressed, micromanaged. I had a 45 minute commute to work and back investment banker working with private equity groups. And Jay, it got so bad for me that I wouldn't get the Sunday blues anticipating Monday coming around. I'd get the Friday blues anticipating <laughs> weekend going by really fast. That's bad, bad, Mark. That's bad. It was really bad. So my firm hires this guy and he's telling me that as a side hustle, he's going to these tax deed auctions. He's buying up raw land, pennies on the dollar. He's flipping them online and he's making a 300% return on his investment. Well, I'm looking at companies all day long. And Jay, a great company, great company, has 15% EBITDA margins or free cash flow. Your average company is 10%. And I'm looking at companies all day long, less than 10%. So of course, I don't believe him. And I've got three grand saved up for car repairs. I go to New Mexico with him. I do exactly what he says. I buy up 10 half acre parcels, an average price of $300 each. I put them online. They all sell for an average price of over $1,200 each. It worked, 300%. So I took all that money. I went to another auction here where I live. And again, this is 2000, there's no one in the room. I'm buying up lots, I'm buying up acreage for like nothing. And over the next six months, I sold all that land and I made over 90 grand. Nice. So, so I go to my wife, I'm like, honey, I'm gonna quit my job and I'm gonna become a full-time land investor. And she's pregnant. She's like, absolutely not. So I said, okay, okay. So I worked land investing part-time for about 18 months until the land investing income exceeded the investment banking income. And then I quit and I've been doing it full time ever since. Wow. That's amazing. So why land versus other real estate investing opportunities such as single family houses, commercial, et cetera? Well, I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, Jay, but I, I mean, it's, it's kind of emasculating to say, but I got that handyman on speed dial. Like, yeah. I, I, like to change a light bulb was like, oh, <laughs> so to deal with anything physical is just not me. So I rather shuffle paper and make money. And right. I, what I'd like to do is I could walk you through the model step by step. And then you'll see like, oh, this is why Mark flips raw in. All right, I'm ready. I got, hey, look, I got my seatbelt on. I got my pen in hand. I'm ready. Put the business model on us. I can't wait. All right. So Jay, you're in North Carolina, right? I am Eastern North Carolina. Eastern North Carolina. So I'm going to go to this county in Texas and I see, oh, there's Jay Connor. He lives in Eastern North Carolina, but he owes $200 in back taxes on this 20 acre parcel in Texas. So Jay, you're advertising two things to me. Number one, you've no emotional attachment to that raw land. You're in North Carolina, properties in Texas. And number two, you're distressed financially in some way, right? Because we don't, when we don't pay for something, we don't value it anymore. And you haven't paid your property taxes. And as a result, the county treasurer has been sending you notices every single month. Jay, if you don't pay your property taxes, you're going to lose that property to a tax deed or a tax lien investor. So gotcha. what I'll, yeah. So what I'll do is I'll look at the comparable sales in that county for the last 12 to 18 months. And let's say that the lowest comp is 10 grand. All I'm going to do is divide by four. And that's going to get me what Warren Buffett would call a 300% margin of safety. So I'm going to send you an actual offer. I'm not going to be like those housing guys that say, I'm interested in buying your house. I don't want to be in the appraisal business, right? So I want to just send you an actual offer of $2,500 for your raw land. And you accept it because $2,500 to you is better than nothing. Now, in reality, 3 to 5% accept our quote unquote top dollar offer of 25 cents on the dollar. So you accept it. Then we go through due diligence or in-depth research. I want to confirm you still own the property. Back taxes are only $200. There's been no breaks in the chain of title. There's no liens or encumbrances. 
There's ingress and egress, legal access, this whole checklist of due diligence. I outsource that to my team in the Philippines. We pay $11 for it. And at the same time, they're getting all the things done that my buyer's going to want to know. The plat maps, the GIS maps, the aerial maps, photos of the area. And if it's an area we've never been in, we might do a local Craigslist gig for 50 bucks, have somebody locally go out, shoot pictures, take video, fill out our property checklist. Everything checks out, and I buy that property from you for $2,500. You get $2,300 net. I pay $200 to the treasurer, and now I own the property. Now, Jay, I'm going to sell this property 30 days or less. I've got a built-in best buyer for that property. Do you know who it is? No. Nope. The neighbors. The neighbors. The neighbors. So I'm going to send out neighbor letters to say, hey, this is your opportunity. Protect your privacy, expand your holdings, protect your view. And oftentimes the neighbors are going to buy it. If the neighbors pass, I'm going to go to my buyer's list. If the buyer's list passes, I'm going to go to a little website you've probably never heard of called Craigslist, 10th right. most trafficked website in the United States. I'll go to an even smaller one, Facebook, buy, sell, and marketplace, buy, sell groups and marketplace. And then landmoto.com, landsofamerica.com landandfarm.com, land of the lands, landflip.com, land hub. There's like all these platforms to sell raw land where people are looking for raw land. Now, the way that I'm going to price it, this is where the magic is. So I'm going to ask for a $2,500 down payment where I might go with, without six months to get my capital back of $2,500. And then I'm going to make it a car payment. Let's say $449 a month at 9% interest for the next 84 months. So Basically, I'm going to get my money out on the down within six months, and then I'm going to have $449 a month coming in every single month, and <laughs> because I'm not dealing with a tenant, I'm exempt from Dodd-Frank, RESPA, or the SAFE Act, any of this onerous real estate legislation. So the game we play, Jay, is can we create enough of these passive income notes where our passive income exceeds our fixed expenses, and then we're working because we want to, not because we have to. I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, let me go back to the beginning of the business model and ask you some questions about each of these steps along the way. Sure. First of all, let's be sure and tell our audience to hang around to the end of the interview, which actually will be within the next 20 minutes or less. And you've got a free gift that we're going to give out at the end of the interview. Go ahead and tell them what the free gift is. And then we'll come back around and give that out at the end of the show. Yeah, so we have a $97 course called the Passive Income Launch Kit. I'd like to offer them for free. If they just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash J, J-A-Y, I'd like to offer that to your listeners, Jay. Awesome. Thank you so much. So back to locating the motivated sellers. So did I hear you say that you are searching for people that own raw land that are behind on their taxes and they live or their tax bill goes out of state to, to it's out of the state. Did I hear that right? That's right. So that's going to be our lowest hanging fruit. Now, once we determine that we can sell that property in that county, we'll actually send out an offer to everybody, whether they're tax delinquent or not. But our lowest hanging fruit and our highest response rate is going to be out of state owners and they owe back taxes. Gotcha. So uh, that, was, that leads me up to my next question. So you're not mailing just to people that are behind on their taxes. You're also mailing to people that are out of state owners of this raw land, right? Correct. Gotcha. Correct. Are there any other criteria or any other types of lists for land that you mail to? Not, not really. That's good enough. I mean, there's a county in Texas that has 28,000 tax delinquent parcels. I Good mean, night. We, I mean, we, we all run out of money before we run out of deal flow. This is a massive market and no one doing it. I mean, Jay, let's go to a RIA meeting and there's a hundred people in that room. 99 of them are house flippers, wholesalers, or landlords. You and I would be, able to land, be the only land guys. I love it. Now, I got a question for you. When you talk about raw land, are you talking about acreage or are you talking about, say, just lots? Both. Absolutely. Any, any vacant land. So if I get that list, the, the quick and dirty way to scrub that list to get everything out, 
might be by use code, which might be VL for vacant land. I got you. I got you. So where do you go to, I mean, are you just going, are you just looking on a uh, public record? Are you just looking on, you know, on the tax card and uh, looking for addresses that are out of state? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to use software to really manipulate all of this. So I'll go to the assessor and I'm going to ask them for the, the real property list in that County. And I want it in a CSV format. Then I'm going to go to my guy on fiverr.com. I'm going to have him scrub that list in Excel using, you know, some, some V lookup and geeky things like that. He's going to give it back to me. I'm going to upload it into my software called LG pass and I'm going to press a button and it's going to send out via lob.com all my offers. So I used to have a, a virtual assistant, Janie in South Carolina, and she would handwrite the, the letters and do the mailing. And this is, you know, years ago. Now we got it all automated. In fact, 90% of the business now is automated between software and inexpensive virtual assistants. I got you. Well, it's very interesting that, you know, we're talking about direct mail and ways to reach out to people. And the reason it's interesting is in my mastermind groups that I'm a member of, I'm starting to hear and see a trend to where more and more of the high producing real estate investors, and I'm not talking people in land such as your niche, but you know, single family houses, more and more real estate investors that do a lot of deals are doing more and more outbound calling. So are you still today totally relying on direct mail or are you reaching out to them in any other additional ways? I'm only doing direct mail. Again, my niche, isn't going to be nearly as competitive as, you know, let's just say trying to buy a house, right? Because if you go on HGTV or the DIY network, I mean, every show on there is, you know, about these fix and flips. Like if you had me on, on flip this land, the before pictures, raw land, the after pictures, raw land, it's really not good TV. Right. <laughs> like, oh, there's Mark in front of this computer. Yeah. Well, hey, look, I, I mean, I love the rehab model. I, I love I love the rehab portion of it because, you know, my best guess is there's no such thing as contractors and overruns and Murphy and his relatives showing up for the unexpected rehab cost. Correct. Correct. Exactly. And so pretty much, you know, you know what you're going to get. All right. So you're so you're direct mailing them now. Did I hear you say you're actually mailing the owners of the property an offer? Correct. An offer. Is the offer a offer to purchase? Is the offer a letter of intent? How do you communicate to them that you're actually making an offer? It's an offer to purchase with contingencies. So we have a, we have a way out, but right. it's, it's an offer with contingencies. They sign it, they send it back. And then we start going through the due diligence process. Nice. Now, I also heard you say, I believe that you get somewhere between three and 5%. So you mail out a hundred offers and between three and five people of those hundred are going to right off the bat, take you up on your offer and sign it and send it back. Correct. Gotcha. Now, how do you establish rapport with these people to where, they don't feel like they're being scammed or this is actually the real deal or what do you put in that envelope that helps in some kind of way, give them a sense of security and they feel safe in, in communicating back with you. Well, I think that because I've been doing it for so long, you can just Google frontier properties or a plus BBB rated company. So we kind of walk them through how long we've been doing this, but even if you're a newbie, you sort of just walk them through the process because this asset has now become a liability. And also they're not emotionally attached to it. So if you, it's kind of like if you go in your garage and you start looking at all these things that you've got kind of piled up and they're just taking up space and mental bandwidth, someone comes to you and says, Hey Jay, I'm gonna clean all this out for you. You're not gonna be like, well, I don't know. I like, give like, yes. Okay. Take it. No worries. So it's very, very rare that we get somebody kind of pushing back on our credibility about buying it. Because again, we're not talking real dollars here, right? I mean, our average purchase is between, let's say between 3,000 and 15,000. 
Got you. Got you. If you were me, would you rip you off and ruin your reputation and, you know, have all this, you know, bad press on, on, on social media for $15,000? I, I wouldn't either. Right. Got you. So let's say someone has responded favorably. I assume they're picking up the phone call. Are they calling and talking to you or one of your team members before they sign that offer to purchase or are most of them just signing it? Or do, you, do most of the time there has to be some kind of conversation before they actually ink that offer and send it back in? Usually there is a conversation with our intake manager. So our intake manager will talk to the seller. Sometimes they just want to call and yell at us and say, how dare you? That's right. Sometimes they're confused. So sometimes they're like, well, you know, my parents own this property and they both died. And now we've got like a probate situation. So our intake manager qualifies them first before it goes to our acquisition manager who might actually close that deal. I got you. So let's say you're at the point of you're actually under contract and now it's time for due diligence. So let's hang out here for a couple of minutes and really dive down on what are all the things that really need to be done before you as the real estate entrepreneur, you know, writes that check and you close on that land. Right. So for the most part, because the raw land is in the Southwest, a little bit in the Northwest in Florida, I'm not buying in New Jersey. I don't have to worry about super fun sites. So We'll still go to epa.gov, but for the most part, it's going to be a financial transaction. And I just want to confirm you actually own the property. So you say, oh yeah, I'll sell you the property. And then I go to the records. I contact the recorder. They say, oh yeah, Jay sold that two weeks ago. So that's a no-no. Now, if it's $5,000 or more, I'm just going to close through a title company anyways. And they would do a lot of that work. But if it's 5000 or less, I might take the risk, especially if it's an area I know really well, and just close directly and not go through title. And so that due diligence checklist is confirm you own it, make sure that the back taxes are not gonna ruin my margins. They're not gonna, you know, it's not gonna exceed the value of the property. Make sure there's no breaks in the chain of title. So from the beginning of time, I wanna make sure there's a clean delineation of, of ownership and doesn't go back and forth. And then I wanna make sure that there's nothing that you know, like an IRS lien on the property or, or something I couldn't handle, like a mechanics lien or some type of, of encumbrance that's clouding title. And then from there, I just want to confirm that what you, can you do on the property? I'll contact planning and zoning. You know, what's the, the well depth? How far is power? What can you do out there? What are the restrictions? Because that's going to be for my marketing package and that's going to help my next but owner know exactly what they can do and they can't do out on that property. But Jay, as long as I've been doing this, I'll tell you what, there's a pig for every barn. <laughs> I, I a mean, pig for every barn. You, you, you and I probably wouldn't want to own this property, but there is someone out there that does. <laughs> well, you answered my question. So I was going to ask if you're actually using a title company or a real estate attorney to check the title and, and, you know, go through a traditional closing. So my team in the Philippines is plugged into an American title company software. So we'll do that for 5,000 or less, but 5,000 or more, we're going to go, go through title. Yeah. Smart, smart, smart. So you've done your due diligence and now you're closing on the property. Now you own the property. Now I'm really intrigued about your technique of reaching out to the neighbors. So two questions, how do you locate the neighbors and what do you, and how do you communicate with them? Right. So that GIS map, you click around it. We have our virtual assistant go in and they just upload all that information surrounding owners and they get it just all uploads in there. And then we send out that, that neighbor letter from there. And that neighbor letter, letter is really focused on FOMO, fear of missing out. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love it. And I'm assuming that when folks go to the landgeek.com forward slash J, as in J A Y, and get the free gift, I assume they'll have your contact information. So, in case someone wants to continue this conversation and learn more about what you do, they'll have a way to contact you, right? Absolutely. All Absolutely. right. 
So you're reaching out to the neighbors. I love the, I tell you what I love. I love the simplicity of, first of all, how you decide how much you're going to offer for the land. You said that you take this really, really complicated calculation of looking at the lowest comp for the past 18 months and dividing that by four. So you're going to offer 25% on the dollar of the most recent comp. Now, how do you, and now how do you get the comps for the last 18 months? So that's all public information from the county assessor. Gotcha. And I assume that you got a virtual assistant and some easy software that, that can locate those comps, right? Exactly. exactly. Beautiful. So then you own the property, you're getting ready to market it. So when you, when you market it to the, to the neighbors, are you disclosing the price or how much detail do you give the neighbors on the property and how they can own it from you? We want them to pick up the phone. So we'll just say we have this property available. It's on easy owner financing terms and you know, no credit checks. We're going to make this the simplest, most transparent, easiest land transaction you've ever done. This is old school land selling. Your word is your bond and contact us for more information because this property is not going to last long at this price. Email us or call us for details. Okay. So you just tease them, give them, let them know that it's available. You got easy terms, but you don't reveal the price until they respond to your marketing piece. Right? Right. Right. Because what's happened in the past is when we reveal the price, they call us and say, Oh, we'll sell you our property at that price. Right. <laughs> right. No. I got you. So how do you come up with the price? So typically for the price, we're going to look at time value of money. So I don't want cash. I want, I want that note. We use a land contract, a promissory note and a purchase sale agreement. I use a software called geekpay.io that automates getting the down payment. So it's a set it and forget it. And then collects the monthly check via ACH. But Jay, if the ACH fails, it'll charge a credit card on file. So I took my default rate down from 8% to 4% with software. And then the borrower can go in, see their current balance, make a prepayment at any time and see their current balance. So it avoids all those phone calls. Hey, Mark, what's my current balance? Or how can I make a prepayment this month? So I really love the software. Now, getting back to where, you know, where do I basically price it? So if I'm going out five years, 10 years, time value of money, I'm marking it up typically 600 to a thousand percent, depending on the area. So in that case, if you've got $2,500 in a piece of land, you're going to market it for how much? So 2,500. So anywhere between 15,000, 25,000. Nice. And you're going to look for a down payment of 2,500. And so you bought a piece of land for 2,500. You're going to sell it for 15 to 25,000. You're going to take a minimum of 2,500 down. You're going to finance it. So about what would those monthly payments look like to the buyer? A car payment. I want it to be a car payment. So depending on that buyer. So I've, I've had payments anywhere from $99 a month, all the way up to 5,000 a month. Wow. Gotcha. And you mentioned you're using a land contract. So you're not taking back a mortgage or a deed of trust and encumbering that property. It's all done with land contracts. So it's, it's all paper. It's all paper because if they don't pay, then there's no cost to foreclose. They've got 35 days to cure that default. They don't default. I'm going to get another down payment, another buyer. I'm going to extend that ROI out. I love it. I love it. So what percentage of those neighbors end up actually being your buyers versus having to find the buyers elsewhere? 20%. Okay. 20% is neighbors. Another 30% is my buyers list. And then the other 50% is going to be from some type of outbound marketing. Yeah. So I assume you don't sell them through the multiple listing service. Cause if you did that, you'd have to be paying a realtor a commission. So you're finding all of your buyers offline, right? Yeah. This is for sale by owner. They're all, yeah. I mean, I'll just go to Facebook, buy, sell groups or Craigslist and just say for sale by owner. Now you, you mentioned that you also market it to your buyer's list. So how do you build your buyer's list? So a buyer's list is going to be, you want to give something of value. Let's say a white paper, a video series. So I have a website called, you know, three fatal land buying mistakes. 
So I'll say, here's how to avoid the three fatal land buying mistakes. And then in exchange for your email, I'm going to give you this list of how to avoid these three fatal land buying mistakes. And then, you know, Jay, we're going to give them seven more land buying mistakes and we're going to build rapport that way. So we're going to educate our buyers to be better, smarter buyers. And in that process, we're going to build trust and we're going to build authority. So when I do say, oh, by the way, here's our deal of the week, they already know me, hopefully like me, but the most important is trust me. I love it. I love it. Well, Mark, we are out of time for this show. So parting comments and how people can get your free gift one more time and continue the conversation with you. Yeah, Jay, thank you so much for having me. I'd say uh, for my parting comments, I love quoting Zig Ziglar. If you'll do for the next three to five years what other people won't do, you'll be able to do for the rest of your life what other people can't do. And if you want to get that $97 passive income launch kit for free, just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash J. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here on the show, Mark. I love it. I love your spirit and I love your business model, man. So to all of our viewers and listeners, thank you for tuning in. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing your real estate investing business to the next level. We'll see you on the next show. Bye for now. <laughs>